Hey St Matt's Youth, welcome back to another awesome term of our live streams. We are super, super excited and I don't know about you, but I've had this like little small hole in my heart that the fact that we have had no youth in the holidays. And so I'm probably like a 12 out of five excited for youth. Um, I don't know about you guys, so chuck it in the chat. How are you feeling about being back um, at youth, being back with our live streams and then later on with our Zooms um, later in this session? Um, it's great to have you guys all here. If you have not been to St. Matt's Youth before, or even if you've just forgotten, we are on about loving Jesus and loving each other. And we are so excited to have you all here um, to hear God's word be shared, um, to pray together and to spend time um, in fellowship together tonight. Um, we have heaps of things that are happening tonight at Youth. Um, we've got an awesome talk from Julie with our new series um, called Rewind Weekly, where we look at a couple of songs that our world um, has produced and we look at what does the world have to say about Jesus? Uh, what does the world have to say about life and how we should live it? And what does the Bible say about how we should live our life? So Julie will bring us a talk um, in a little bit and we'll be hearing a little bit more about that series very shortly. Um, and then a, a talk series later in the term on 1 John, which should be awesome. Um, but right now we've got an awesome game from Alice and then later on we will be having a Goey special classic, so get keen for heaps of things happening tonight. Hey guys, I'm Alice and I lead the Year 6 Girls and welcome to the game segment for tonight. So we are joined with Julie today. So we're going to be testing you guys' and Julie's knowledge on how well you all know the leaders. So make sure you chuck in your guesses um, in the comments section but we are gonna show you some baby photos and you have to guess who they are. So the first photo here, you have Julie, um, is, a, is a girl. She, you know, loves a bit of a party, you know. I can see there's some very big balloons. Mm -hmm. You know, loves a groove, bit of a social butterfly. It's a very cute little headband. I also noticed there's a Tickle Me Elmo, I had one of those when I was a kid. Ah, okay, so you know but the age. <laughs> I have actually no idea. I reckon, I reckon I'm gonna guess Look, it looks like the present says Eve on it, so I'm gonna go with Evie. That is incorrect. Oh! <laughs> the answer is, it is Emerson. Oh! I know, little Emerson. Little hair. Oh, okay. Very cute. So the next one, now this girl. She knows how to model, <laughs> honestly. Like, look at that feather boa. She, oh, she's a cutie. She's a cutie. Okay, I think I know this one. Yeah. I think this one's Evie. Yeah, you're right. Yes. It's Evie, it's Evie. She has a classic Evie look, you know. She does. Very okay. cute. They're getting a bit harder now. Now this girl, Ooh. you know, she's got a bit of, again, posing. She has bit a bit of two, sass. Yeah, 2000s vibe, you know, love the fringe. Yeah, love the blue. Okay, well, I'm looking at the dark hair. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking it's Laura. You're right, you're yes. right. It is Laura, it is Laura. You're smashing Two out of three, two out of three. Bees. Okay. Now, I will say, <laughs> The guy, so the guy who sent this to me referred to himself as the original Tiger King. <laughs> so just take that, take that in mind. Um, okay. You know, he's got a bit of raw to him in this photo. <laughs> <laughs> he's cutie, like, you know, got, got a bit of a smirk going on. Like, I like it. I think it could only be one person, really. Who? Is it Nick? Yes! yes. Uh, how did you guess that? I don't know. He's just like Nick now, but like miniature. <laughs> <laughs> like a miniature Nick, yeah. You're right, you're right. Okay. <laughs> now this one. They've got the bed head going on, you know, the luscious locks. Like, oh. It's definitely an O'Brien. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Looks a bit like Ned. Is that your final answer? But I'm going to go with Noni. Because it's she's Noni. a leader. It's Noni, <laughs> it's not Ned. I, I said that too, I thought that too. Oh, it's gorgeous. I love it, like loving that little uh, mohawk situation that's going on there. Very red hair. Noni, your hair changed. <laughs> Now this, obviously this oh. person <laughs> loves the photo quality. You know, yeah. they obviously love school, got that academic streak in them. Mm. I think, yeah. Also got the eyelashes still. Oh, 100%. This one's gotta be Sam. Sam's You're gotta right, be Right, it is. <laughs> um, okay, so swipe. This guy, he loves a laugh, oh. you can tell. Um, the real question is there. Got some good front teeth. A bit of family resemblance here. Do you reckon? I think so. Who do you think it is? I think it might be uh, Dee Dee's son, Joe. The Joe one, Bissett. the only Joe. Baby Joe and his <laughs> What mother. a cutie. Yeah, <laughs> got that one. 
I'm getting better at this. The first one was hot. Oh. This one. This okay, is a fashionista. <laughs> Honestly, look at that hat, that bucket hat. Oh. I have no hand. idea. So it's obviously a girl. It's a girl. It's, it's a, a girl. girl. Yeah, cool. <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's uh, a tricky one. It is really hard. Do you, wanna, do you want a hint? Yeah, can I have a hint? She was on this week's live stream. It's got to be Emma Linsky then. No, it is not. Oh. Try again, try again, try again. Okay, all right. Alexa. Yeah, it's Yay. Alexa. Okay, now that was our last one, but our final bonus round. Okay. Right. We know how well you know your youth leaders, and I think you did pretty well. Pretty well, yeah. Now, how well do you know your youth? We have one photo of youth. Swipe and you'll see. <laughs> Bonus points if you can tell so, us which is which. So it's Noni and Jim? No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I guess I have to figure out who's who. You have who. to figure out. Oh, who is They're it? They're literally, we well, it's obviously Ned and Jim, our <laughs> yeah. like resident male twins. Um, oh, man. I have to just go for it because I have no idea. Okay, mm. the one with his tongue out, I reckon, is Ned. And the one without the tongue is. Mm. Um, Jim, that's my guess. Lock it in. Yes. I have a feeling that is, no, that is not correct. That is not correct. <laughs> you don't even know. Correct. Nobody, nobody knows. <laughs> that is not correct. That is Jim. That is Ned. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I actually, I do remember hearing that, um, like, when they were born, I think Ned was like the bigger baby. No, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. <laughs> and shake from Paulo. <laughs> okay. Well, that concludes the game for this week so i hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you later thanks julie let's go are you ready to do this yeah and if you do it i'll give you ten thousand dollars take it okay give it back okay, okay thanks from Philippians chapter 4, verse 10 to 13. I rejoiced greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I'm not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to, have pl to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Hey Julie, so I just mentioned before that we are doing a new talk series this term called Rewind Weekly. What is that? What, like, what is that? Yeah, cool. Um, so, hey everyone, good to see you guys again. Um, so our, our new series, Rewind Weekly, is all about taking um, popular songs that we all listen to and rewinding, going back and having a look at what they're actually saying. Um, and then, yeah, and looking at the beliefs of our world and what um, the Bible and what God actually has to say about those things too. Yeah, awesome. And um, why have we actually chosen to do this series at St. Matt's this term? Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, so we are doing this series because like all the time we're hearing um, the messages from the world, whether it's like on Netflix with what we're watching as we're scrolling through social media or in the music that we listen to, our world actually has a set of beliefs um, just like Christians do. And so we want to think about um, what do we believe and what are the messages that our world is, is sending us? And as Christians, um, are there things that we take on board? Are there things that we should reject? Are there things that we can redeem um, with the gospel? And so we're going to be getting into some of those songs to have a think about that. Yeah, I feel like that's really going to be awesome. I remember a few weeks ago, I was um, listening to even like Strawberry Kisses by Nikki Webster, classic song. And just listening to the lyrics, I was like, oh my gosh, was I really listening to this when I was like seven years old? Like, this is outrageous. So yeah, it's, I'm super keen for the series. Not that these guys would have heard it because they literally weren't born. You should <laughs> listen to it and chuck it in the comments if you know it, because now I'm too shy. Um, and what are you most excited for about this series? Um, I think I'm really excited because I just think um, it's really going to help us. The, the songs that we're looking at and the issues that we're looking at within them are just really important things for us um, as young people in 21st century Australia um, who are Christians. So, yeah, I won't give you any spoilers, but I think, I think it'll be a really good series. Awesome. Cool. I'm going to pray for Julie now and then she's um, going to bring that talk to us. So get keen. Um, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much um, for the world that we live in and the way that you have um, shaped us to be um, followers of you so that we can be glorifying you in this world. And we just pray that as we um, think about um, the music that we listen to and what our world has to say um, about how we should be living life versus what you have to say, and we pray that you would be challenging us, encouraging us to live for you. And we just pray that you would speak clearly and faithfully through Julie and that um, we would all learn heaps tonight. Amen. Thanks, Em. No worries. Hey guys, so um, as you just heard, we are starting a new series tonight, which is really exciting, called Rewind Weekly. Um, and so, yeah, we're going to be getting into the book of Philippians that we've just heard read um, and looking at the idea of dependence. Um, but first I want to tell you a story. So four years ago, um, me and three friends went on a day trip to Melbourne to go to a cat cafe um, because one of my friends really loved cats. Um, not me, I'm actually allergic to cats, so it wasn't a great day for me. But on the flight home, um, the coffee and tea cart was like coming up and down the plane and I um, ordered myself a nice hot tea. And literally as like the coffee cart like rolled away, the plane all of a sudden hit like pretty decent turbulence. And I was sitting there with this cup of boiling tea going up and down in the turbulence, trying to keep it steady while the plane goes like this and I'm going like this and there's tea going everywhere. Um, I was being totally shaken along with the plane and the consequences were less than ideal for me. But I actually think that sometimes life is a bit like this. Um, sometimes life gets a bit shaky and as it does, we get shaken up um, with it as well. And so for our first talk in our series, um, Rewind Weekly, is Blinding Lights by The Weeknd. Um, and so many of you will know this song. It's been doing the rounds on TikTok. Um, it's a good one. But it's really a song all about restlessness. It's about a guy whose head and heart is totally shaken. We've got the singer who used to be in a relationship with this woman, but who is now um, deeply unsettled and shaken without her because she won't love him anymore. So have a look at the lyrics that are going to come up on the screen. This is from the end of the first um, verse and into the chorus. Um, I'm not going to sing it for you, but I'll read them out. Um, you know how it goes. I can't see clearly when you're gone. I'm blinded by the lights. I can't sleep. I'm drowning in the night. So he can't see, he can't sleep, he can't function without this woman. His soul is restless and shaken because his life has thrown him circumstances that he doesn't want or like. He's dependent on her love, putting him at ease, steadying him and making him feel like everything is okay. And it really actually shows us something about how we tend to go about life. I think we often depend on our circumstances to keep us steady and to make us feel like everything is okay. We think that as long as we have this girl or this guy, um, as long as I'm friends with this particular people, or this particular person, I'll be fine. As long as I get like just a B plus average, my parents will be happy, everything will be fine. As long as I get into this degree, as long as I get this job, I will be fine. As long as my circumstances turn out okay, I will be too. As long as the plane doesn't hit too much turbulence, I will be all right. So have you ever been to event cinemas to see a movie at Macquarie? And as you're waiting to see the movie, you kind of watch the ice skating down below. 
And you know, you might see like a cute couple who are skating around with their arms linked. And then all of a sudden, the girl, you see her lose her balance and she does the like, whoop, whoop, whoop. Um, and she starts clinging to the boyfriend who then also starts doing the whoop, whoop, whoop. And then they both just like lose their balance and all of a sudden end up in a pile on the floor. Well, I think our circumstances are about as reliable as that boyfriend. They can change in an instant. And when they fall apart, we end up in a heap on the floor. And that's exactly what's happened to the singer in this song. His relationship has been ripped from him and he's totally shaken by it. Now, I'm sure many of us have felt the shakiness of life before. Um, maybe like the singer, you've been left totally rattled um, after a breakup. Maybe you've been hurt um, and confused after your parents have told you that they want to split up. Um, maybe your whole year has been ruined by a virus. Maybe your best friend has found a new best friend or you found out that someone that you loved has died. You've been left shaken, confused and hopeless. Sooner or later, life's turbulence, it hits us all. It's unavoidable. But the question that I want to ask tonight is, are we just bound to our circumstances? When the plane hits turbulence, do we just shake with it? Or is there something better than our circumstances that we can depend on? So in our passage tonight, um, we're going to meet a guy that claims that there is, who claims that he has found the secret to contentment, the secret to steadiness throughout life. So the guy writing in Philippians in our passage tonight um, is a guy named Paul, who many of you will know. He was one of the first ever followers of Jesus, and he was an absolute gospel gun, and he set up many of the first ever churches. But Paul was all too familiar with the ups and downs of life. As far as life goes, he had a very turbulent time. Throughout his life, he endured the following. He, he was whipped with like 40 lashes five times. He was beaten with rods three times. He was pelted with stones once. Three times he was involved in a shipwreck. He'd been under threat from people he knew, people he didn't know, at sea, on the land, in the city and in the country. And that's all before this point when he writes this letter, because at this point, he's been in prison for two years. And despite not doing anything wrong, he's waiting to hear whether he is going to be killed or not. And he's living off food supplies sent to him by other Christians, including the Philippian church, who he's actually writing to in our passage tonight. When we look at Paul's circumstances, he has nothing going right for him. And I think if I were in his situation, I would be pretty shaken myself. I think... I'd be whining about how hungry I was, thinking and worrying about all the things that um, I might never get to do in my life and wishing that my situation were very different. But let's have a look at what Paul says about his circumstances. So open back up to Philippians 4 verses 10 to 12. So he says, I greatly rejoiced in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. So he's thanking the Philippians for their gifts. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. But he says, I'm not saying this because I'm in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. Paul has an incredible response to the turbulence of life. Um, so he's first of all thanking the Philippians for the supplies that they sent him. And then he goes on to say that he doesn't actually really need those things. He's thankful for them, but he doesn't need them because despite his circumstances, he is content. Whether he's in need, whether he has plenty, whether he's hungry or well fed, he's okay. He's content. He's kind of like a country that has everything that it needs to survive and thrive within its borders. Like right now, all the borders all around the world are closed and yet we still have to import things and export things to other countries in order to um, kind of function properly. But Paul's kind of like a country that has like all the petrol it needs, all of the animals that it needs, um, like all the entertainment industry that it needs to keep us um, entertained and excited. Um, he, he doesn't need anything from outside of himself because he has something that gives him contentment. He says he's found the secret, the secret of being content, whether life is good or whether it's bad. So what is this secret? Let's have a look back in verse 13. He says, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Him. Paul says, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. The secret to contentment, to depend on Christ. What Paul is saying is that he has everything he needs in Christ, even in his situation. 
Paul says he has everything he needs in Christ. Whatever comes Paul's way, he knows that Christ will give him the strength to meet it. And how? Because Christ is not temporary. He does not change. Everything else we can depend on in this world will fade. People will leave us. People will pass away. Possessions will lose their value. They will break. Achievements will be forgotten. Even people will be forgotten. But Christ is eternal. The eternal rock through the turbulence of life. And when we depend on him, whether our circumstances are good or whether they are bad, when Christ is at the center of our lives and our affections, we can be content. Though life is always changing, Jesus never does. Both good times and bad times will pass, but Jesus will remain the same beyond this life and into eternity. So how do we actually depend on Jesus? How do we depend on him? We depend on him by finding our identity, our worth, our joy and our security in him, whether life is totally fine, whether it's chill or whether it's turbulent. All of these things are unshakably available in him. Um, about four years ago, I actually developed a chronic back issue. Um, so basically it means I can't sit down for very long. And some of you may have seen me like, I don't know, standing up at the back of church or standing in a room full of people who are, who are sitting down. Um, and this back issue has actually meant that I can no longer do a lot of things that are pretty normal and things that I really used to love doing. Um, so like I can't go on holidays anymore. I can't really travel anywhere. That's more than 10 minutes away in a car. Um, and so two years ago when this all kind of came to a head for me, it absolutely shook me. Um, when I couldn't go on holidays with my family, when I had to miss youth camps, when I couldn't go to people's weddings, couldn't go on road trips with my friends, it really hit me hard and it had a huge effect on my mental health. Um, yeah, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a good time for me. But over the years, um, God is teaching me what it means to be content in Christ, even when my circumstances are shaky and not what I want them to be. Um, because I know that God is in control and I know that Jesus loves me and that he has a plan for me, even if that plan um, involves this back issue that I have to deal with. And it's not all the plan that I would have set for myself, but it's God's plan for me. Um, and so I know that through him, I can do all things um, that he wants me to do in this life, even if they're different from the things that I want to do. Um, and I don't always get it right. Um, I don't always find my contentment perfectly in him, but I'm learning what it means to be content, no matter what my circumstances. And so the question that I want to leave you guys with tonight is have you found the secret to contentment? Or are you like a passenger being shaken up and down by an aeroplane? In Jesus, there is no guarantee that life will be easy. Like just look at Paul's life. That is not an easy life. But when we depend on Christ, we can be content whatever our circumstances. Thank you so much, Julie, for sharing. Um, that was so encouraging. I think for me, I find being content in Jesus really difficult sometimes. And so thank you so much for sharing how the world um, yeah, views that and how we should be um, being content in Christ. Um, we're going to hear from one of our absolute babe youth leaders of the Year 9 girls now, um, Alexa. And she's going to share um, her story of how she came to know Jesus um, and how she has come to find contentment in Jesus as well amidst some really, really tricky things in her life. Hi, I'm Alexa. I lead the Year 9 girls and here is my testimony. When I was six years old, my dad died unexpectedly in front of me and my three siblings from an asthma attack. We tried to save him, but we were too young and there was nothing we could do. That was the day that death became real for me. Growing up without him was hard because I never got to say goodbye and I feel that I missed um, a father figure. It left a huge hole in my heart that could have steered me to a different path. <clears throat> I read statistics that tell me that I should have depression. They say that I wasn't supposed to finish year 12 or go on to study at university. Um, they say that I will end up in a dysfunctional relationship and involved in substance abuse. Statistics that say I will be a failure. Yet anyone who knows me will say that I spread positivity wherever I go. I'm always smiling. 
I strive to achieve my full potential and I care strongly for those around me. People wouldn't know from looking at me that I lost a parent at such a young age. Those statistics could be true for me, but Psalm 68 verse 5 says, A father to the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy dwelling. Where I felt broken, God filled that hole in me. He was the father that I grew up without. My dad's last words were, help me, help me God. He was a Christian and I know that while I lack a father on earth, I have two watching over me in heaven. And one day I'll get to see them both and how I look forward to that day where I run into his arms, tears in my eyes, yet unbelievable happiness reunited under God's mercy and Jesus's blood. At 18 years of age, I look at my life and I see it isn't perfect and I see how important God's presence has been in shaping it. Without him, I would be a completely different person. Just four years after my dad died, I was diagnosed with type one diabetes. It's a chronic illness that has um, thrown me all sorts of challenges, often ones that people don't see from looking at me. For example, having to wake up at 3 a.m. in the morning, sweaty and shaky from low sugars, or um, the thousands of needles I've had to poke myself with, literal thousands. Diabetes is another possible reason for me to follow those statistics I mentioned. How much more pain Jesus went through up on that cross when he died, carrying the weight of my sins though? My pains are nothing in comparison. When I was in year eight, I made the decision to get baptized and being lifted out of the water and cleansed from my sins was a moment I'll never forget. And I picture my father God smiling down at his one, as his once broken child cries to him to be saved and he lovingly forgives her just like that. I knew exactly what I wanted to do when I finished school. My heart was yelling nursing Studying it, I understand why. The other day we were taught how to deal with and respond to death, something that will be a reality in our job. It's unbelievable how God somehow places you in a spot at a specific time to interact with the people who you do and the underlying impact it has. With my experiences at a young age, I know that the Holy Spirit has gifted me empathy um, to care for my future patients and their families in a way that others would have to learn. <clears throat> While I wish I could go back in time now, knowing basic life-saving skills to try and revive my dad, I can see the good that God has done and will be doing in my life. Think about all the lives I may save as a nurse. And then I think of Jesus who died so that all of us can be eternally saved. And I think and see all the lives I could change as a Christian. Death is real and it can happen to anyone at any time. And sharing my testimony isn't to scare you or brag about all the things I've achieved or have you pity me. I want to share reality with you. And this world is broken. It's inevitable that things will be shaky and out of our control. But how much better they can be when you depend on Jesus? Accepting this truth is a big decision. But why would I want anything else? Don't be afraid to come to God. Be brave. Confess your sins. No matter how broken you may feel, he will love you as his child and welcome you into his family.
Not outside an IGA? Weird, right? That's because we're leaving the North Shore for this edition of Frozen Food Review. Our next guest didn't go to St. Matt's. Actually, he used to. You might remember him. Can you guess who it is? Maybe. Anyway, beard? We feeling it? Give us a yes in the chat. I don't know. Also, never say I don't care about my guests because this week was salmonella friendly. We're keeping it in cold packs with some Shanghai chive and pork dumplings. Get that in focus. Look, I'm not going to say it's better than the War Select brand because it's got Chinese characters, but I'm not saying it's not going to be better. Anyway, our next guest, Toby McGregor. He's electric. We'll go to him now. We're here with our guest, Toby McGregor. It is just... It feels like you've been missing from our lives, St. Matt's. It's so good to have you here. Uh, what have you been doing uh, since you left St. Matt's? Uh, living here. This is my good. house. Welcome to my house. Uh, this is my couch. It's the only one I've got. Uh, and then also, I work now at Village Church in Annandale, uh, which is in the inner west, south of the Harbour Bridge. Um, doing much the same thing I was doing at St. Matt's. Loving and serving young people, uh, showing them who Jesus is and walking alongside them as they uh, explore, discover, and love Jesus for themselves. Cool, I like it, that's good stuff. We've got three questions from uh, the fans at home. So first question, uh, number one, uh, do you still have that hat? Uh, no. He still has the hat, okay. Second question, uh, if you were Donald Trump, which Donald Trump would you be? Would you be Donald Trump in Home Alone 2? Donald Trump on Celebrity Apprentice or Donald Trump when he won the first election, 2016? Uh, I wouldn't be Donald Trump. I just... That's not who God made me to be. Big Hillary guy. God everyone in the chat, big Hillary guy. Alright. Enough chatting. Yeah. One bite, everyone knows the rules. Pork and chives, Singapore edition. One bite, everyone Singapore knows the rules. Edition. One bite. Velvety. That one's juicy. I'm still have water in it. <laughs> that very wet, wet and wild. A little bit like Luna Park when you're going down the Coney Island slide and you're in the potato you know, shop. I've never been to Luna Park. You should go. It's good. <laughs> Not if that's what it's going to feel like. Good. I like it. What? Oh, um, come for more. Alright. One uh, bite, everyone knows the rules. Apparently two bites. Uh, uh Tim? Uh, 3.7. They're pretty manky. Expert score gave a decimal point. I'm saying like 6.1, really good, strong chives. You know, if you're gonna go, if you're looking for something to buy, it's probably not a bad option. Um, no, it's a bad option. Okay, it's probably it's a little better than the Giuseppe's thing that I got two weeks ago. Anyway, comment below uh, who you want to see ne on our next edition of Frozen Food Review. Um, this has been a blast, Toby. Thank you uh, for showing us your life. Uh, yeah. and thank you yeah, for well, my room, this my lounge room. I'm not sure if I showed you my life. That's true. Well, everyone, uh, uh, maybe I'll start a vlog. That would be good. That'd be good content. <laughs> See you guys next week. Vamos. Hey guys, that was such an awesome night. I don't know about you, but I really enjoyed it. I got lots out of it. Um, yeah, I really, really loved Alexa's testimony. Um, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, that was awesome to hear um, how, yeah, God has been working in you and your life and how you um, have found contentment in him. Um, what we're gonna do right now is we are going to go into our Zoom discussion group. So your parents should have got an email about that um, during the week. So click that link and get keen. Um, I really encourage you guys to all go along. Um, it's a really awesome time for you to be reflecting um, on your weeks and reflecting on the talk that we've just heard. Um, yeah, so it would be awesome if you could join um, and yeah, spend time with each other there in fellowship.